Hello, welcome to Marky Mark Reviews, and this is my review of the Dyson Pure Hot and Cool Air Purifier, which is the purifier you can see on the blue stool, which I'll talk about later. Uh, and to the left, you can just see the original uh, Dyson Air Purifier. We have owned this purifier now for around eight months, so we're quite used to its many pros and one or two cons. Uh, we own the original uh, Pure Cool Link purifier um, for five years now, and it's been brilliant. But we always used to say, wouldn't wouldn't it be nice to have something similar, but just didn't blow out cold air, but could blow out warm air as well. And I think this is the one. Like all Dyson products, it's got a lovely, clean, modernist design. Uh, this is the loop amplifier, which doesn't have any blades, so there's no chance of injuring your fingers on it. And it weighs 5.6 kilos. When you receive the Dyson purifier in its box and unpack it, it all comes in one piece, but there is just one small thing you have to do, and that is to insert the filters. There are two such filters, uh, front and back, and this is the business end of the machine at the bottom, the base, where all the weight is. So you have a glass HEPA filter front and back, which has uh, borosilicates microfibers that absorb 99.95% of all particles. And then you also have two carbon filters, which are the purple things you saw inside, which you have to insert. The carbon filters help to remove gases and bad odours. This is the plug, which is a nice slimline, low profile plug, and it's attached to a kind of brownie grey cable, which is about 1.8 metres in length. So you've got to be aware of that because in a lot of the Dyson literature, they always show it placed in the middle of the floor with no cable. The, the purifier comes with its own uh, infrared remote control, which when you first pick it up can feel rather cheap, and that's mainly because it's very light, weighing just 26 grams, but it's got very nice uh, feel in the hand and nice clicky buttons. So the first button on the remote that you tend to use most of all, obviously, is the one at the top left, which is the on-off. Uh, when you press this, you get the basically the home screen, which is the one you're going to look at most of all. And there's a traffic light system with the Dyson for green, meaning the air quality in the room is good. Uh, and then yellow, amber and red for poorer quality. Then you have the uh, fan speeds, 1 to 10. The auto mode is very commonly used, and that means you can just set it to auto and just leave the machine to come or turn itself on and off if we detects uh, poor air quality in the room and that works very effectively. And then the next button is the swivel or oscillating function. And again, this is really glides very, very smoothly and quietly. There's no motorized noise when it does turn from side to side. And you can adjust the angle of attack via the app, which is what I'll talk about uh, later in the video. Uh, next button down is the timer button, the bottom bottommost left button, and again you can uh, tell the purifier to turn off after a preset length of time, which you can adjust in the app uh, also. So good maybe at nights, for example, if you just want it to turn off. Then you have the uh, sleep uh, function. which uh, just helps to make it uh, much quieter. It just uses the lowermost speeds uh, and also turns the display off so it doesn't emit a glow in the middle of the night, for example. And then watch this next function is actually very important because, because the purifier blows out cold air most of the time. If you don't want to be have cold air blown at you, you can just tell the Dyson to eject the air out the back of the machine. Uh, so you're not uh, buffeted by any airflow. And then the uh, <coughs> other buttons on there are just a direct uh, button to uh, turn on the cold air function and then also uh, the heat function. We have a closer look at the main display using the eye or information button at the top right. This first display just gives an indication of the last 24 hours uh, air quality. Um, this just shows how much particulate matter uh, particles less than 2.5 microns have been detected. This is particle matter uh, less than 10 microns. 
This is volatile organic, organic compounds or VOCs. This is nitrogen dioxide, typical of what you see from uh, petrol or diesel emission cars. This is the actual room temperature. This is the humidity. And this gives more information about the HEPA and carbon filters, what state they're in. This is showing that they're still in very good condition and pretty much 100% and don't need changing anytime soon. I'll come back to that later. And this is just showing, showing that it's uh, connected uh, normally via Wi-Fi uh, to the app. And again, I'll be going into detail about the app, but it basically replicates uh, whatever the uh, remote control can do. So now we're just going to have a further look at these direct buttons for temperature control using the remote control. So using the nice clicky buttons, uh, you can just ad adjust the temperature, I think up to uh, almost 40 degrees, I think 37 degrees is the maximum. So you can see now uh, the video shows that the room temperature in the kitchen where this is being filmed is 23 degrees and I've just uh, asked it to increase the temperature of the room up to 30 degrees and this is of course the whole reason for getting this particular purifier is because you can use it uh, as a fan heater in effect and I've just turned on the swivel function uh, and you can get an idea of how no noisy it is because now I've programmed it to heat the room up to 30 degrees actually the fan actually comes on at virtually maximum speed because you must do that as quickly as possible so as it swivels around you just get the um, the effect of the noise on the, on the microphone to give you an idea of how noisy it is when it's uh, basically going at maximum speed. And as you can uh, maybe be able to tell, but essentially what the machine's doing is sucking in the air into the bottom mesh parts of this machine where it's, the air is purified and cleansed and it's being taken up and ejected via that loop uh, bladeless uh, amplifier uh, up above. Uh, where it's being ejected, the clean air is being ejected. Yeah. Now I'm just going to give a demonstration of the noise of the fan. So I'm just gradually going to increase the levels uh, fan speed. It goes from 1 to 10. So using the remote control buttons, I'm just going to increase uh, the fan speed. The microphone is around uh, 2 meters away from the fan. So as I increase uh, the fan speed, it will get noisier, obviously. I would say from levels 1 to 4 or 5, the noise of the fan is very hushed. And then above 5 and all the way up to 10, it gets very noisy. And then 10 is almost like a, <laughs> a mini gale force effect of noise in the room. And again, one of the newer features on this one, as I'm activating it now, is that you can reverse... Uh, the airflow so the airflow comes out the back of the loop amplifier or the loop vent so therefore you're not getting the if you don't want to be sitting in front of a hurricane it's all going out the back and then i'm just going to turn it back to the normal uh, front facing uh, vent and you can hear it on the microphone i'm just reducing the fan back down now so yeah levels one to four nice and hushed and again, just turning on the swivel function, again, lovely and uh, quiet. There's no motorized noise as it turns. It just does it, just glides silently from left to right. And uh, just to be aware, all that air is coming out through that black rim, you can see. Now, time for a change of scene. I'm about to boil a kettle of water. Now, you may wonder why I'm doing this, but... Uh, <laughs> There is a demonstration I'm going to make here, and it's relating to the Dyson. So as you may know, boiling a kettle of water is quite a high demand on your electrics. So this is a typical, fairly typical kettle that boils water uh, at three kilowatts. And here's an energy app that I have uh, because I have a solar system in place. This is just giving a demonstration of how much the house is using and normally uh, without much going on in the house the house uses around 0.2 to 0.4 of a kilowatt 
and as I'm demonstrating here is I've turned the kettle on and it's boiling uh, just a small amount of water and as you can see it's using 3.2 kilowatts now of energy of electricity in the house and as it gradually comes to the boil it's still increasing and then hopefully when the uh, kettle finally boils this will drop and there we go so what was all that got to do with a uh, review of a Dyson air purifier well as I'm going to demonstrate now when you're using this as a normal cold fan heater purifier and it uses very little electricity barely 0.1 to 0.2 kilowatts and as you increase the speed as I'm showing here so it's like the maximum fan speed at 10 and it uses around one kilowatt of energy so that's pretty reasonable I think so I'm just reducing the fan speed again now And now what I'm going to do is turn on the heating effect so it becomes a fan heater again. So it's still a purifier but now I'm using it as a fan heater to heat up a room. So you can see the room temperature at the moment is 23 degrees and I've just chosen a room temperature to get up to, to 35 degrees. And you're going to see immediately it jumps up to 2.4. Now 0.4 of that is what the house was using as a baseline. So it's using around two or just over two kilowatts of energy. And now you can see it's jumped up to 3.9 kilowatts. So you can imagine, or comparing it to the kettle boiling, which was three kilowatts. This is using 3.7 kilowatts. And of course, there's a major difference between this and a kettle. And the kettle is only on for around 90 seconds. Whereas in my own experiments, if you turn this on as a heater, it can, it can run for hours trying to get a temperature or trying to get a room up to a particular temperature. And it really does burn through a lot of electricity to do so. So it's quite a, uh, a high cost machine to use as a fan heater. I'm just reducing the temperature now back down to 27. And now I'm going back down to less than the room temperature. So it becomes uh, a normal uh, like a fan not a fan heater and as I as I drop the temperature down then it just acts like a normal fan and consequently the energy it uses will drop this is a slight lag on the uh, the energy up there but as you can see now it's dropped down to 1.4 kilowatts and if I need it any cooler in the room using this fan then it will drop even further as you can see there it's now down to 0.5 kilowatts so it's just um, being used as a normal fan. So at low speeds or low temperatures, it hardly uses any electricity. And as I'm demonstrating again now, I'm just turning the fan heater on in effect. And you can see when it's at higher temperatures, 30 degrees C, I've set it at, then it really starts to consume a lot of electricity. And it's uh, a lot of electricity a number of hours unfortunately and just to demonstrate that this has a tilt function as well so that's uh, tilting it back so it's pointing up into the air as a unit as a whole and it can also point downwards if you've got it on a slightly elevated position can't do that from the remote control it's all manual and it's just quite heavy so now I'm just going to demonstrate the app that comes with the Dyson unit after you register it you download the app from in my case the Apple App Store and you can just see I've got two machines registered the very original cool purifier tower which I've had for five years and you can see on the title page it just gives a reputation representation of the house uh, as you can see there a house outside so outside temperature is eight degrees and inside the house it's saying everything's good the air quality is good there's a traffic light system so the color of the house inside will either be green for good uh, yellow for not too uh, good, orange for poor, and red for very poor air quality. And you can just got some basic uh, controls on the front page of the app, on off, fan speed, temperature control. Just to turn it on as a normal fan instead of a fan heater. So as you can see the illustration is showing 
warm air coming out and now I've just turned it to cold air uh, coming out of the fan and because it's an app you can control this from wherever uh, not just in the home but uh, even outside the home or if you're at work for example before you get home and this is the basically remote control app so all the buttons mimic the physical remote control and in all honesty you just tend to use this app far more frequently than uh, the physical remote control because the phone always tends to be on you with the uh, swivel oscillating function I did say it was 360 degrees but it was the maximum angle is 350 degrees but you can see you can set uh, different parameters there for the sweeping angle and that's to reverse the flow so if you don't want to be buffeted by uh, any airflow then it can tell it to exit out the back and then this is the timer function so you can, can just set or preset the timer function from 15 minutes uh, up to nine hours so when you choose it you just press set and it's done and then you've got the night mode again at night it just puts it at very low speed so it doesn't disturb you and it turns off the display so there's no kind of glowing lights in the corner of the room and that's it and that just shows you uh, everything you need to use to use it on the app so in summary then I can definitely say the Dyson Pure Hot and Cool Air Purifier is a great bit of kit. It's very expensive, over £500 in the UK, but it's got that typical great design from Dyson and it's of very high quality. Lab tests definitely show that this is good at purifying the air. Uh, just be aware that the cable that it comes with is just 1.8 metres long and Dyson specifically say it must be plugged into a wall socket and not an extension cable as there's a risk of overheating or fire. Um, because of its design and the fact that it weighs 5.6 kilograms it's not particularly easy to move so that's why I put it on this blue stool because therefore the stool is at a it's much easier to slide around uh, just away from the wall and it's at a decent height as well while up on the stool I must say though if you're going to use this as a heating appliance as a fan heater then it's much better to use something like an oil for radiator which is on the left hand side of this image because that's much cheaper from electricity point of view and if you're going to purchase this for your parents, for example, just be aware to tell them not to use it all the time as a fan heater because the electricity bills will be very high. If you did like this review, please give it a thumbs up. And if you really liked it, then please subscribe. This is Marky Mark Reviews.